Uh, well, ironically, my, my first slide was about changing communications, but Jonathan's done it so well, that's really good. That saves us a slide so I can move quickly on and talk about the technology uh, specifically. Now, we use this phrase, unified communications, um, and there is, I suppose, a question of uh, what that really means. Well, <laughs> in one sense, it's what it says on the, on, the, on the slide there. It's the integration of the telephone system and the computer system. But it, it's... It's not just about instant messages and presence and using your mobile phone, because they're all part of it. It's all about management information. Um, you can't manage what you can't measure, so being able to, to measure the business. Even one could argue something like a simple call logger that tells you how many calls in and out of the business is, is part of this thing about unified communications, because there's the telephone work going on and there's the management information behind the, to let you know how long calls are taken and how many calls are being made. So all of those make up this technology. And, and the idea of the handset now, it's, um, it really doesn't matter, it's whatever the device, um, I hate the idea of bringing your own device, by the way, but, but it's there and it's, it's challenging us. And, and this wouldn't mean too much to you guys, but for my colleagues in Avaya, they see me with this phone and they all go, because they used to me having an old Nokia E61. I had the same mobile phone for 10 years, and that was my great punchline, and I can't do that anymore because I'm forced down the route of having a, a smartphone so I can look at web pages while I'm on the move, I can do uh, more interactive stuff. I can demonstrate our technology to you, because on the old Nokia, I could sort of do, but not as well as I can on the new one. So all of this technology is what it means to us, and I hope to show some of these devices um, when we go through to the demonstration area later. Um, so yes, integration of the telephone system and the data solution, information exchange is all part of it, like voicemails into emails, and using the, the right cost services. And, and today there's a lot of talk uh, around SIP technology as well. Now, now this is where I do feel a real fraud. So I've been, I've been working for um, Avaya for 13 years and I've been in telecoms businesses for, for many, many years. Um, I've never run a small business, so I'm standing here telling you the challenges, which is really a strange thing. You know what your challenges are in terms of the business. But naturally, I'm picking out the ones we might be able to resolve with unified communication, so obviously the slide's a little biased. But things like maintaining high levels of productivity is obviously a key one. Making sure people always are able to take calls, and that's one of the key requirements of unified communications. Why do you have to be at the desk to take a call? Why can't you be in the warehouse? Why can't you be in the cafe down the road? Why can't you be on the golf course? So, so that's part of the, the strategy. And also keeping on top of messages. I know as a business is, do we really like voicemail? Do we really want voicemail? Do we really have a choice? You know, because we just can't answer all the time. We, we sometimes have to let it go to voicemail. Like, you're all busy now, hopefully listening to me and not answering phone calls. So keeping on top of those messages is key. Um, and of course, ensuring staff are dealing effectively with customers. Um, I, th I think again, think how we feel, how we're treated when we call into a business. If you call into a business and you hear ring, 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 there comes a point where you go, there's nobody answer this, I've got the right number. And just a simple thing like a message in the queue, thank you for calling <laughs> we'll with you shortly. But then when you get through to somebody, to be put on hold while they chase up somebody else, and then you get to somebody else and they ask you what your name is and you think, I've not just given that to somebody. Yeah, we all experience <coughs> those type of elements. Which leads me nicely into the argument about fast responsiveness. And I do think I've made up a word here, but I can't think of how else to say this. Um, it, it, it is getting the right person, the right customer to the right person. It's been able to, to make sure in your business Again, I, it's sometimes a bit difficult because I, I, I know when I've been into small businesses and I've done demonstrations for small businesses, it, it is the lady on reception that takes the calls and makes sure that it gets to people. And it's that nice personal touch of having somebody to answer the call and make sure it gets right, rooted to the right person. But there are times when automation can help and can be a benefit and it's, it's judging between the personal touch and the automated, automated stuff. But in your business, you invariably have lots of people with different skills. So when a call comes in, you want to make sure that it gets to that person very quickly. And again, where unified communications <coughs> makes a difference, you can see at a glance who is available to take your call. So you're there, you know who can help you. <coughs> 
retaining talented staff, um, <clears throat> again, you know, in a large business, we see lots of people come and lots of people go, usually at the senior manager level. Sorry, it's been my little dig. <laughs> but in smaller businesses, obviously, you, 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 you hopefully you're more of a family, you, you work closer together. Um, but being productive, providing effective business processes is where I'm thinking here, is if, if a particular individual is taking all the calls and feels they've got all the burden and feels they handle it all on their own, that particular indiv individual, in relevant of their skill, may feel overused, underused, under pressure and may seek work elsewhere and you lose some talent in that way. Whereas if your processes allow that person to quickly um, take the call on, move the call through, they feel more comfortable in their job. And if they know they've got access to help when they need it, at a glance I can see who can help me with this problem. It all makes the whole work uh, ethic nicer. And of course, how much time am I spending at work, how much time am I spending at home? And, and it, it all varies for all of us during our careers. You know, starting out we might do lots of work, getting closer to retirement we might be spending a lot of time at work, but there's a good period in between where we want to spend more time at home with family, with kids growing up, and we had a couple of guys this morning, first thing they're doing, talking about the kids and all the rest of it. My son's 32, by the way, so <laughs> <laughs> well, my little bit in there. Um, you win. Yeah, so, so life work balance is obviously important to our staff. And, and finally, reducing costs. It, we, we all know it's all about. Um, which type of services you might be using, but also making best use of the staff we've already got to make sure they're productive. Now, before I go into answer the question, I just want to put a couple of slides up to explain where IP Office is today. I believe some of you may already have IP Office, some of you may have the Index, previous products, some may have the Nortel portfolio, which IP Office has replaced, um, and some of you might be new to it. <laughs> but we, we we used to sell IP Office as small, medium enterprise, and that was typically 150 below, 200 below, that's how the product was perceived. It technically could do a lot more than that, but that's very much how the marketplace perceived. Today we sell it uh, as, we have a, an element called Essential Edition, which is the entry level, single site solution, typically up to 50 users, technically up to 300, but typically you wouldn't go much above 50. Voicemail into email, basic requirements, auto attendance, queue messages, things of that nature. Um, it provides mobility as part of the solution. Now for those customers who need a bit more in terms of unified communications, improving their productivity, we add what we call a preferred edition license. So essential edition is a system license, preferred edition is an addition to it. We now can increase scale, we increase resources, we increase productivity, we've got unified comms. And if we want to network these sites together, take several IP offices and link them all together into what we call a small community network, we can provide all that unified comms over a multi-site solution. Uh, and again, technically, I can tell you it is a thousand users and 32 sites, <laughs> but in sort of the, the, the sizing of the product, you find it fits very nicely in the 500 user uh, multi-site environment. We can add a call center solution to that, for those interested in customer service which again technically is 150 agents, but we realise market-wise it fits better in the 50 to 75. Now this is IP Office as it's been for many years. This is the way we've, we've run the product. But what we introduced last year, <coughs> release 8, point 1, was IP Office on a Linux server. So now what we do, we take the voicemail, we take the unified communications, we take the IP Office core software and put it on one Linux platform. And that allows us to run on a single platform up to 500 users and we can du duplicate the platforms to get to a thousand users on a single site. So the scale of the solution, and the reason the difference between this and the earlier versions is this means all the licensing is centralized, I've got two platforms, resilience between the two, a single management solution for the two, and so it sort of grew the IP office into what is now this mid-market solution. Um, <clears throat> so easily up to thousand users, I'll say 750 because you want to leave room for movement and um, I think I'm allowed to say this now, come August or at least nine, <coughs> that ceiling will rise from 1,000 to 1,500 so IP office is going into that sort of general area. And in case we're still not big enough, we obviously have in the Avaya portfolio, Avaya Aura, which I have no idea what the limit is. Port, is there a limit? <laughs> Up to 36,000, but tens of thousands. 
yeah. enterprise. Yeah, massive enterprise stuff. And the, the point is, IP Office even works within that portfolio, typically as a branch solution. So if you're the type of business that has a headquarters and 20, 30, 40, 400, 500, 600, 3,000 branches, um, there is one I'm working with right now that's got 3,000 retail outlets across the world. 300 of them are here in there. I'm not going to tell you because I'll nick it. So, <laughs> so that's the typically where IP Office is working in the little retail, but it's all about aura in the core. So, so there's those type of technologies we move to. So that's IP Office no longer an SME solution, very much moving up into the platform. And, and, I, and I, I, I was suggesting I should have taken this slide down because I think I've just said this on the first slide. <laughs> so this is a slight repeat, just with pictures. Um, there's the platforms, IP500 or Linux server. We have a data infrastructure underpinning uh, IP Office now, our, our own data portfolio. A range of devices and endpoints, including video. Multi-site solutions. Um, yes, it does actually turn up in what we call basic edition, which is just dial tone. So if you, if you don't need any features, then there is a, a very simple entry level. Essential with the mobility, preferred edition with the UC, server edition combining the features, advanced edition bringing in all the uh, call center requirements. And then our partners, well we offer the IP office support services now through our partners. So we provide support to our partners and our partners will add all the relevant to jobs. Well, let's get back to the, uh, the initial slide about challenges. High levels of productivity, how, how do we ensure, where do we make sure of that? Well, let's look at um, the uh, first element. I've missed a slide somewhere or something's missed off the line. This is all about using a technology called One X Portal for IP Office. And again, in the system licensing, it's enabled by preferred edition. It's a wonderful technology going on here, isn't it? One X Portal for IP Office is where we're running a piece of software um, on a Linux server or a Windows server or part of the IP Office Server Edition build, and we're providing access to that core software application via whatever means you want to use. So we start off with just a web page. You open up a web page on your PC or on your Mac or on your device, and that web page works with a telephone on your desk. So you can receive control calls, make receive calls and you've got presence, you can see instantly who's available to assist you. <coughs> you can control all the calls in the conference. You can change your profile so that sometimes this is working in the office, sometimes it's working against your phone at home. And that's the first level. But people who feel that that web page is a bit heavy, a bit too much for me to deal with, we have a nice little plugin in Outlook. So it just sits down the side of your Outlook and gives you presence. <coughs> There's no instant messaging just yet, that will be developed later, but it gives you core control, it gives you presence, and both of these technologies are working with the tech. Now while we're on the world of Microsoft, for those of you who have chosen Link as your desktop for instant messaging and presence and desktop sharing, for those of you who use Link, we can also use OneX Portal to integrate the Link client <coughs> with the telephone system. So when a call comes in, it pops up in the Link client and tells you who's called and allows you to accept or reject. It shows you the presence of people on the telephone system. Now we're not talking about the OneX portal being instant messaging and presence. You don't need that anymore. You've got Microsoft to do all that. We're just doing the link, the link, <coughs> the, point, the connection between link and the telephone system through the OneX portal technology. So, so we can work quite well with it. And by the way, because it's the client, I don't care whether your link server is local or whether it's in the cloud. Yeah, we're just working with the client. We even have a Salesforce plugin. No instant messaging and presence, just a telephone control. But for those people who are using heavy work in Salesforce, you can um, click to dial from Salesforce, you can screen pop Salesforce, and you can control your phone. Now all of these things I've talked about are using a phone on your desk or some sort of audio device alongside the computer, the application. For those who are saying, well, no, 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 I want to use <laughs> my PC as the telephone, we have a a soft phone element for PCs and Macs. We have another soft phone element called Flare, which is for iPads and PCs, so we've got a tablet interface. Um, we have an application that runs on the phone which works with your mobile phone. So your mobile phone is the audio device, but the application gives you instant messaging and presence. And again, I'm, I may be giving away some secrets, but in release 9, we'll have a SIP app to plug into that 
phone as well. So you can work it over Wi-Fi technology instead of over mobile technology. So all of those are the, the things that we have in one export technology for you to improve your business. Now, how does it really do this? Well, ensure staff are all available to take calls. <laughs> what can I say? Job done. <coughs> I don't care what device you use. Mobile phone, iPad, Mac, web page, using your landline, telephone at home, using them through a web page. That's the idea. I'm sitting at home. I need to go into the office. I look outside. It's March. It's still three foot of snow. <laughs> so I can't get into the office. Well, if I've got an internet connection and I've got a phone and I've got a PC, I open up a web page. I, I work my landline at home. And if I want to make a call for business purposes, I don't pick up my phone at home. I type it into the computer screen. Command the telephone system, the telephone system calls me, I pick up the phone, I've answered the call, the person thinks I'm calling from the office, because obviously I'm going through the telephone system. Um, also, I can see status of people, so instantly I can um, see who's available, who has managed to get online like me, that I can bring into the conversation. So one export will provide in that use of any device anyway. <clears throat> and we obviously also have deck and Wi-Fi solutions for warehouse type environments to bring people in. And keeping on top of messages, all our software images have voicemail into email capability. So everybody gets voicemail into email. You just turn it on, turn it off for different type of people. Um, and when we get to the preferred edition level, we can synchronise the voicemails into emails. So that's how we sort of keep on top of that technology. And when you're using your mobile phone, you, you can use your mobile phone and your desk phone. So if you have to have a desk phone, and you move it away from your desk, you can answer that on your mobile phone, and once it's on your mobile phone, you can walk back to your desk, push the button on your desk, and suddenly the call's back to your desk. So the basic things like that. And, and we're finding this mobile twinning technology is starting to replace the Wi-Fi and the deck technology, yeah? Because in a, in a warehouse environment, uh, or a campus environment, where you're having to put lots of access points or lots of deck base stations around, Suddenly, with the mobile tariffs you can get nowadays, that, that's often a more cost-effective way of keeping people in touch. So making sure everybody's there, making sure you keep on top of messages, ensuring your staff are dealing effectively with customers, and that was the punchline I said it before, you can't manage what you can't measure. So we have that advanced edition license that, that we put into the system, which switches on real-time information. So a call centre supervisor can see through a web page. It's exactly what it looks like. Who is about? How many calls are waiting in the queue? How many agents are available? How many calls a particular agent has missed? Because um, there's an interesting concept. You see, you, you if a call comes into a, a, a customer services team and and it alerts somebody's phone on the desk and they choose to ignore it. That's what we class as a no answer. Now the call could well be answered by somebody else in the system, but somebody had the opportunity to answer a call, um, and they didn't answer that call, so it took longer to get it answered. So you, your productivity is going down slightly because the customer's waiting longer, and you're having to use other agents, and people aren't taking note of it. So things like no answers, which is not quite clear, but a measurement like a no answer for a call centre is quite important because. The supervisor can see immediately which members of staff are not actually being as productive as I expect them to be. So it's a way of keeping on top of them. <clears throat> we can also show all the staff the status. We could, and this is another interesting concept, um, a lead table. <laughs> Bit of a controversial one that you imagine having a lead table of who's performing the best in the call centre today. That could be good because it encourages people. It could be bad because it puts people under unnecessary stress. But you choose the parameters you display on the wallboard. So, and the wallboard is a simple, again, just a web page. No special machines or anything. Just a nice screen everybody can see. <coughs> and also graphic, graphical representations for the supervisor of how things are performing today. Now on top of that we add call recording capability. So we can do some nice samples of recording and they can be searched for by date, time, by agent. So all about keeping the quality there, all about making sure your staff are being effective. You're free to answer, ask questions by the way, whenever you like, don't, don't, don't be shy. <laughs> um, responsiveness then, so let's, let's look how we deal with that. So 
Um, right customer to the right service. Now this is this is basic telephony here. I'm showing you hunt groups for crying out loud. What the? <laughs> Where's in this wonderful technology come to when I'm going back to the original telephone systems with hunt groups? But but it is it, it, it is an important part of the system, um, and it's where IP office does differentiate, especially over some of today's more so-called sophisticated telephony systems. I'm not into competition bashing. So, so the idea is what we can do with IP office with hunt groups. We, we bring a call into a hunt group and the idea is somebody in that group is going to pick up that call. And a good example of a hunt group is if you phone an individual and that individual isn't at their desk, so their phone's ringing, or if they forwarded the call, rather than just go to voicemail, there's no reason that call couldn't be forwarded to a hunt group, rather than go to there, go to there, go to there. Just the call comes to an individual, they can't answer, it goes to a hunt group. If somebody in the hunt group doesn't answer the call, it goes back to the individual's voicemail. It doesn't get lost in hunt group technology. So it's always thinking about where did the call originate? Where was the call going to? Can I always make sure the call goes back to the place it was originally to? And hunt groups are the same argument. If I bring the call into a hunt group and it's a sales group, I want that call to be answered by sales or I want messages related to sales. I don't want messages related to customer service. So although we can pass the call on to customer service and say, excuse me, will you please come and answer this call for sales? The call's still in the sales queue, which means any messages or even voicemail if we want to go there, the group level is all done. So having the right hunt group scenarios are important. And we can put multiple people in multiple groups. And as I say, we can do the same thing work for users. We can have messages that say, this position in queue, estimated time to answer. We give them auto attendance in queues to break out. And I know it seems strange. <laughs> I'm reminding you of the basic features and functions of a telephone system. But you know what? That's in traditional telephone systems. The more new voice technologies don't necessarily think about all the grouping elements. So it's quite quite good to think we've got that there so to fall back on with our companies. I mentioned the receptionist earlier and yes if, if, if the personal touch is always important but, but we then need to give that person the tools to do the job and we have a just a it's just a Windows application to be fair, it doesn't work on anything other than a, a PC. But it's a, a very simple intuitive tool called receptionist that shows instantly who is available to take the call. So the receptionist receives the call, she can look at the sales, she can look at a group like sales, she can see if there's anybody in sales, if there's nobody in sales, she can reach a direct to service or she can push it straight to the sales voicemail if she wants to. Um, who is available in terms of individually, who's got voicemail left for them, who's in a forward state, a do not disturb state, and the receptionist can change that state. So if the sales manager is walking out the door and the receptionist looks down at the screen and goes, oh, their phone isn't forwarded through this little tool here, they can forward the phone for them. So you're giving them call control on people's phones. And the other real, and I hope I'll get time to demonstrate this, but just in case, the other thing that's really useful with this that when I've demonstrated the receptionist is the, the note, adding a note. If I take the call and I put it on hold, which is this screen down here, if I then take another call, another call, maybe when I get back to that call, or that call comes back up to me, I may have forgot why I did it. I would have. <laughs> so therefore, I can have a put note on it before, it before I put it away. I'm just type a little message in. So if it's call for Jack, it's down here with a little message, call for Jack, and then when it pops up, I can say to the person, yes, sorry, I'm still trying to find Jack. So annotating the, the calls is very useful. Especially because you can use this across multiple receptionists. So as the call comes back, different receptionists can respond in a different way. So the right piece of software to make that person who's giving that personal interface the ability to, to be responsive to that call. We then have the automated processes. Um, that's an example of the call flow for our voicemail system uh, and our automated attendance item in our voicemail systems. So again, press one for sales, press two for service, we can route around forever if you really want to, but it's giving intuitive choices. It's not having a big list, and if you've ever dodged with these businesses, so, um, please select one of the following, and they go on and on and on, and by the time you get to option five, you're thinking, was it option one I wanted? I think it was option one, and you might have to play it back again just to hear. We don't do that in IP office. You give them two or three choices, and then you give them an extra layer of choices if, if you need to, to so make a very simple auto attendance. 
And with advanced addition, we can go a little step further now. We can be a little more responsive to our important customers. If, if they're sitting in my database, if this is a customer that's important to me, and they're handled by a certain individual, when they call into the system, instead of routing all the calls to the receptionist and then saying, hello, how can I help you? I can route the calls to the voicemail system. The voicemail system then takes a look at the caller ID, or we can ask the caller to enter some information if you wish, but looking at the caller ID is a much cleaner way. Um, we then take that ID and look up the database, your database, it's nothing to do with us, it's, it's your customer database. If the caller ID exists, somewhere else in the database will be, who owns that call? Where do I route that call to? So that caller, every time they call in, always end up in the right location. Now, if it doesn't exist, we simply route them off to the receptionist and they're handled in this normal way. Or if they're calling from a phone, other than the one they normally use. We could take that a little step further. We could turn around and say, well, if somebody's calling the sales team to order stuff and they're, they've reached the maximum credit limit, then we may need to work, bring the accounts department in to sort out the credit limit or to pay off the bill. Now, rather than the sales agent having to have that conversation, we can check their credit limit before we route them to sales. There's all those sorts of things. There's just a few random things. I mean, if you can think about your business and think about you want to route, route calls and think about your customer database, that level of integration is all there on our um, and, and this is where um, tanks skills come in, in as much as they have the technical, the engineers that can work the bit between the two elements to improve your business and make it more responsive. Um, and I'm back to the one export I mentioned earlier that if I want quick access to skilled personnel, I can see at a glance through my various interfaces who is on the phone, who's available, and I, I don't necessarily have to phone them. Like I say it depends on the application, I can instant message people. In fact, we can instant message on anything except for Outlook at the moment, <laughs> still what there's missing. Um, so if I'm sitting there, my, if I see somebody that's um, out and about and on their iPad, and I need some advice from them, instead of I can either just click the little button and phone them up and they answer the call on their iPad or on their mobile phone, or I can just send an instant message to them and say, do you have an answer to this, or can you join me for this? So that, that, that's, that's real responsiveness, that's really getting the call dealt with instantly, and it's all about visibility. And I'll put this little diagram up here to represent IP offices networks, or indeed server edition, because server edition would be like a primary server, a secondary server, a backup, and then little IP offices as, as gateways. But because it's a multi-site all acting as one, that, that access to skill is not just your own little office. If you've linked all your IP offices together, or the, net, the, 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 the server edition is all linked together using an IP infrastructure, those instant messaging that present is across a multiple site solution. Um, um, you know, I was listening to some grads doing some presentations yesterday, and I counted how many times they said, um, I'm going to figure something to count how many times I do it, so remind me. The um, customer services records is, is all about now reacting with your CRM applications. Uh, and again, we have one export technology like Salesforce plugin, like the call assistant or pop up Outlook, but we also have TAPI technology in the IP office. And we deliver two types of TAPI technology through IP office. One is what we call first party, where if the phone on the desk rings, we send all the information about that call to the client PC, and hopefully you've got something on the client PC which will go, oh, I understand all that, and bring the records. And the other way is we send all the information to a server, where again, there's usually a bit of middleware, and a bit of software that takes all the information from the telephone system, and says, okay, you're ringing that particular person who's using that particular PC. That's a typically thin client environment, yeah? And so then the information is pushed out to the person. Um, so all of that uh, is, is there to be developed, to grow. And we have several Dev Connect partners, what we call Dev Connect, that are able to work with your CRM applications and with our TAP interface and pull it together. But again, I, I think you might find you guys have got, pretending you've got that built into your organisation anyway to do that sort of work. Yeah. This is the odd one, you know, there's some smart person out there that's already worked it out, you know. Okay, returning, returning, retaining talented staff. Um, 
And again, we're back to this uh, uh, effective business process and I'm back to CTI. So I'm, it's a common theme here. <laughs> I'm sort of starting to repeat the phrases I'm using, but it, it, for somebody to receive a call and then say, just bear with me one moment, I'm just going to bring your records up on the computer and they're typing in the number, and they go, so, sorry, what, what was your name again? And you can imagine somebody talking to somebody and trying to translate their telephone number the same, translate their name or spell it correctly, and, and that's sort of the old method of doing it, but with TAPI technology and CTI integration, it makes all that a lot quicker, a lot more responsive, but more importantly, the person taking the call has less stress and less aggravation, yeah, and can be more productive. Oh, I brought all three together there. But that's where looking at CTI, it, it, is, is, it can be really good for your business. And then when we think about what we can do with preferred edition, by filtering out and asking all the questions before we get it to the end point, the agent. What we can do with advanced edition with utilising the database integration. So the person taking the call in, their job is to deal with that customer, with all the information, instantly. And it's less pressure for that agent as well. So that's why it makes it all um, easier for, for productive, uh, productivity. <coughs> Share the load. Again, if you are sitting there with a customer and you've got a challenge, you've got a problem, you've got a question, there's nothing better than being able to click a little button, drag somebody else into the call as a, on a conference, and the three of you solve the problem together. Or if you want to do it privately, you do an instant message to the person, and you're having an IM chat with somebody while you're trying to deal with the customer. And there's, there's, there's other elements I've, I've left out of here, which I should have thought about, because what we do with IP Office now, we also do um, intrude, listen, which we have done for some time, but we also coach and whisper. So for a call centre environment, for an example, a call centre supervisor can now break into that telephone conversation, advise the agent to know to respond without the client, without the customer hearing the conversation. Yeah, so that's part of the, the element. And things like whisper is where you are talking to somebody and you call somebody else up and you just say, I need your help on this call. So you pass a message onto somebody. So all that sort of basic telephony uh, stuff is there in the IP office as well. Stuff most systems have always had, <laughs> sometimes we forget, but they're there to, to, to help you work the load. And of course, measuring performance. To say to a call center agent, um, actually you've done really well this week, you've, you've done a lot of calls, you've met your quota. That's again what the advanced edition and customer call reporter is all about. Um, allowing you to encourage your agents to be even more productive, to provide real-time information for them so they can see what is happening with the call centre. We're down to finishing too early here. <laughs> I think it was six minutes. <laughs> okay, so work-life balance, um, and again, we're, we're into the obvious answer here. I can now be anywhere at any time on any device you nicked that off me earlier, <laughs> to, um, to deal with those calls. So with the uh, one export portal, working from home is a good example there. Um, the fact that you're working from home doesn't stop you being part of the team, doesn't stop you uh, having, uh, collaborating with the people in the office via instant messaging, uh, knowing the presence of people via call control, and we'll see later the copyright by lunch, uh, by lunch, by video. Psychological thing going on in my head there. By video, we can uh, we can collaborate even further. And whether you're using an iPad, whether you're using a Mac, whether you're using a PC, uh, uh, just a mobile phone, all of those allow you to to spend that time from home. So it's easy enough to to be in the office, do the job you need to do, but you need to leave early for for something's parents evening for the kids, so you're thinking, I'm going to leave at three o'clock. It doesn't stop you working, it just means you leave the office at three o'clock so you know you're at home in time for that evening event. Yeah? And things of that nature is where unified communications makes a big difference to us all personally. And if your staff are able to do that, they're going to feel freer, they're going to feel less stressed, they're going to be more productive, and they're going to stay. I think there was a, a, a wonderful statistic somewhere, and I, I, I remember losing something about why people leave or change jobs. and. And often we all think it's about money. Of course it is. <laughs> you can't eliminate that. But it's not just about money. It's often about how you feel personally in your workspace and, 
uh, and how comfortable you feel. So, so money will be a reason, an edge, obviously, but that balance, the thing that makes the final decision is, so they're paying me more money and it's a better job. Well, they're paying me more money, but I love the job I'm in. And it's, it's that type of thing you want to think about with employees. If they're comfortable where they are, it's not necessarily going to move just for the sake of money. Right, removing, uh, reducing operating costs. Um, again, just talking about making your staff happy so they all want to stay. <laughs> but uh, if you are um, <coughs> measuring performance using advanced edition and you're working out that, you know, okay, I've got 20 people, um, the reality is if I change my business processes, if I introduce unified communications, if I add another element here, if I do some automation, I only need 15 people to do the job. <coughs> that's, it's a sad reality of business, but that's one way of reducing operating costs, is making best use of the existing staff. And, and another, another way to look at that is, if you're going through growth and you're scaling the business, you know, if I've got 20 staff, but you know, the, the business is growing at a, at a fair rate, uh, if I can make those people more uh, productive and more efficient, then I don't need to um, uh, uh, proportionally increase my staff uh, overhead and cost as I scale the organisation. Marketing technical. I'll just fire <laughs> everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, no, knowing how your business is performing is the key element and um, making sure you're making the best use of staff. Again, the ex access, to, access, access to expertise, especially if you have multiple offices. I mean, if you've got um, if you've got HR, if you've got a head office with HR people and you've got a smaller locations without HR um, and you think, well, you know, maybe the people in the smaller offices should have access to HR like everybody else, once you've got small computer networking and the system is all acting as one, they're all collaborating and they can instant message and they can get direct access to HR. It, that's making use of the best staff. Mm -hmm. You don't suddenly have to add lots of people everywhere. Same with IT. Um, I haven't put that one down here, but. The thing about IP Office is really, really simple to configure. It's not difficult for your people to learn your IT guys. So you don't need a high level of IT skill to be able to set this up and keep it running. And, and with Britannic beyond you, you can keep it running anyway. And so having, uh, having the right product, which doesn't drain your IT department, is also an important part. Oh, new bullies, I've got to add to the list then. <laughs> and the business processes, again, we're back to the fact if, if if you can deal with calls quicker, if you can be more responsive, you can be more productive, therefore you're making best use of staff. So all the obvious statements. And, and the thing about optimum services, it, it's going a little outside of, of my skill as the telephone guy because I'm looking at the services. Um, and it, it's, are you using analog lines, are you using digital lines, are you using Citronks? But the simple point with IP Office is it does allow you to use any one of these technologies, whichever provides the most cost-effective solution. And, and I'm, I believe that if you do lots of international calls, SIP is something worth looking at. If you do just local calls, I'm not sure there's a big difference. Well, again, it depends. I mean, I'll, I'll come on to that later. Okay, yeah. good, good, good. So IP office is going through SIP technology. Uh, and again, we're back to if I've got multiple IP offices, I can use a wide area network to bring them all together. Not just past data, but all past voice and enhance all the features I need. But people talk with audio, but they meet with video. I think I might have nicked this one off Julian. I don't know where I got it from now, but <laughs> it is one of yours, yeah? No, 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 it's not one of mine, but I like it. Oh, good. Um, it will be one of mine now. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the point, and, 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 and I'll admit it's been a little bit of a luddite. Um, the idea of suddenly having to do video conferencing with my work colleagues was, uh, and, and I actually went on one of the early uh, training courses that Julian did, and I did ask you that question, if I remember, was why do we need to see each other when we're having a, a conversation? I know what these guys look like, yeah? I recognise them because I recognise the voice. Why do I need to see them? Because you see what they're saying. <laughs> you see what they mean. And that sounds really weird, but that's where I started to realise as I started to go on these GoPro events. And the trouble is they catch me as well, because I'll say something and, and they go, do you really mean that? And I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> because they see facial expressions and, and you see when people are paying attention. Um, we had a, a, a partner a, a event where we was promoting IP office 
and video and data. And we had a lot of partners on a big screen like this. And as I was doing my presentations, I noticed one or two guys sort of disappearing. So I said to them, you know, <laughs> uh, am I losing you there? Do I need to, do I need to re rephrase that? And you said, <laughs> back in again. Just fantastic the way you can use video to bring people in. Now I've just stolen his lines. But, but that's where we can go and the technology that Julie's going to talk about absolutely integrates with IP Office. 